G'day there guys, so today I'm gonna to show you how to build this antenna. This is one of the easiest antennas to build for the two meter band. It is a flower pot or a T2LT antenna. It's using nothing more than a piece of PVC piping, some RG58 coax, a connector to connect to your radio, and that's all that you really need. Also, maybe a bit of tape. But this will allow you to have a great option to upgrade your handheld antenna if you want to get more range and it's simple it's easy to build let's have a look at it so what we've got is the top half of the antenna which we remove the braid and we remove the shield so that we just have the center conductor is sitting there then once what we do what we do is we leave the shield and the sheath here for the bottom half of the antenna so that's what our coax basically looks like. And we've got now two parts of our antenna. We've got the top half and we've got the bottom half. So what we're gonna do is the measurements that we will use will depend on whether we put this inside the PVC or whether we put it outside the PVC. So here I've got my uh, length of half inch, 25 millimeter PVC pipe. So you can put it inside if you want to, that's gonna change our length because uh, the electrically sh shortening of the antenna. So we have to make it a little bit longer if we mount it on the outside. Now you might think, well, what, what's the point of actually mounting it on the outside of the PVC? Well, it gives you greater flexibility. And here's a, an a antenna that I've built previously, the same design, and this is for 10 meters. And you'll notice that I've just got a small little piece of PVC here for the coil, which is the next half of the antenna. But it just means it's a lot easier to slot this down over the top of say a squid pole if you're portable um, or if you want to mount it on something else maybe you want to hang this antenna and you don't want to use a full length piece of pvc now because we're doing this on two meters it's fine because of the length is not too long and you can get you know this sort of pvc or this conduit in this kind of length but uh you know, it, it's all dependent. So what we'll do is we'll go through both uh, the lengths that you require. So this top half, if you want to do it inside the uh, PVC or you want to mount it inside a radome, if you want to call it, then the length that we're going to use is 400, 457 millimeters, okay? Now, if we want to do it on the outside, outside the PVC, we need to make it a little bit longer. So we're gonna do it at 468 millimeters long. So that's the top half of this antenna here. So our just our center conductor. Now for our, from where we go to the bottom half of our antenna, our measurements do change a little bit. If we wanna do inside the PVC, we're going to use a length of 447 millimeters. And if we wanna do the outside, oh, wrong pen. If we wanna do the outside, we're going to use a slightly longer length of 458 millimeters. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, because I'm gonna be mounting mine on the outside, I'm gonna be using these particular lengths right here. But you can adjust depending on how you wanna actually build this antenna for its final product. Now, once we get to the bottom half of our element, what we're going to have here is we're gonna have a coil. Now the coil is going to be a coil of RG58 on that former. So you can see here that I've already got mine um, wound around this PVC and this is going to change depending on the size that you use. Now I'm, I'm using 25 millimeters or half inch here at the moment. So what I wanna do is, and this is our coil, let's just draw it like that as a visual representation. So on half inch, I'm going to use nine, or do nine turns, nine turns of the RG58 on that, and that's for 25, millimeters or half inch. Now, if I wanna go slightly bigger, here in Australia, it's very common to get 32 uh, millimeter conduit, which is heavy duty stuff. 
Uh, we're going to use five turns, five turns on, on that if you want to use that as an alternative. Now, once you go past the coil, this is just a, a, a length, doesn't matter what length it is, uh, back to your radio. So try and keep this as short as possible because of the loss of the coax. But, uh, you know, we can make this a couple of meters just so that we can connect that into our radio. So all in all, one piece of coax, top cut off, a coil there, and uh, that's all that we need really to build this antenna. Now there's quite a few people at the moment that are upgrading their amateur radio license through Ham Radio Prep. Ham Radio Prep offer interactive courses on their website that you can take to upgrade to either general or extra, or if you're just starting out, you can also take the technician course as well, which is the beginner entry level. Now these are interactive, they are online, they are a fantastic way to learn, fantastic way for you to be able to study for your amateur radio exam. And if you want, there is a discount code below in the description, put in HAMDX and you get 20% off all of their courses, including some of their other ones like HF Masterclass or Baofeng Basics. Now in addition to that, the guys behind Ham Radio Prep also have the WRL or the World Radio League. This is an intuitive logging and logbook software. You can use this for POTA, you could use this as your main logging software. It is modern, it is intuitive, and it's got a ton of features. Now there, you can sign up as a free member if you want, or you can sign up on a paid plan which offers you quite a number of uh, upgrades and also features. So if you wanna do that, then there is a link below in the description to check it out. All right, so what I've done is I've already stripped uh, quite a bit, probably more than I needed to, off the uh, top of the coaxial cable. So you can see I've just got the braid here ending. And what I like to do is just put a bit of uh, glue line heat shrink over the top of this once we get the measurement right. So let's measure the top. So here I'm going to start this. It's it's, you know, make this as close as you can. It's not super, super critical. It is good to, we're gonna make this slightly longer anyway, so we can always trim. It's much better to make it longer so that you can trim it down if you need to. So we're gonna make this 468 millimeters, which is there. So that's where our top of our antenna is, or the top part of our antenna. Now, the thing that I like to do is I like to measure the next half bit of the antenna by putting a piece of tape on, on there. Now, I was actually gonna, I think, make a different band antenna. This is why it was already sort of pre-cut rather than two meters. I was gonna make it for six meters. So I think that this had the six meter measurements on there. So what we do is now to measure, so basically what we wanna do is we wanna measure now the distance here which is our second or bottom half of our antenna. So let's go and do that. And we've got a measurement for the outside PVC of 458. So what we're gonna do is measure now from where our braid ends. We put that at 400 and that's 55, 56, 57, 58 there. And we go back to the start of our tape measure. And this now is where our coil will start so that we know where our bottom of our bottom element basically is. So now I've got my measurements all cut out properly. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna mount it to my PVC here just to do some tuning. Now I usually, I said that put some uh, glue line heat shrink on this part portion here, but we might need to potentially adjust it. So we probably don't wanna be doing that um, until we go and finalize where we're gonna have it. So for now, I'm just going to simply tape this onto the PVC, and we can just do this in intervals of say 300 millimeters or so. And then what this does is this will sort of keep our antenna sort of rigid on our on our coax. And then once we get to our coil, so that's with our green piece here of cable, we're gonna want to now wind this onto the PVC. So what we'll do is, I like to just, I've already taped it there, but we can tape it again. We'll just tape this so that it just holds that in place, right at the 
start of our coil, like so. And then we can start our coil. Now, I need to put on, uh, what is it? Need to put on nine turns. So that's full turns. So there's one. So we're coming back to where we start on our coil. That's one turn, two turns, three turns, four turns, five turns, six turns, seven, eight, nine. So what I like to do is I like to just bring this out um, sort of in line where, our, where we sort of started. And we'll just tape that, tape that up to just secure it there. And you notice that our coil can sometimes spread apart. So I just like to go over it here with the tape just to sort of hold it to hold it together so that we don't get the coil spreading apart and changing the diameter and doing all sorts of weird things. We've got now our coil, we've got our antenna attached to the PVC. And I've now got a short tail here of coax, which I cut off earlier. I just measured maybe a couple of meters. The coil wasn't going to use that much. And now all I've got to do is put a connector on this and we can go and test it. So I've just got the antenna mounted here just on the bike stand just to test. And your SWR and everything might also change depending on where your mounting location is and the situation that you've got it in. So I've just got my Nano v &A here as it starts to rain, funny enough. And you can see there, if you can see past my reflection, you'll see that we've got a 1.178 SWR. But look at the frequency, 139 megahertz. So it's too long, but that's a very good thing because what we can do now is because it is too long, we can easily shorten it. We just need to trim it down and make it a bit shorter. Okay, hopefully I can explain this. It was very windy outside as well, by the way. So we had the lowest SWR at 139.350 megahertz, which is way too low. So what we wanna do is because effectively the antenna is longer than it needs to be, we can shorten it. So what we do is we take the frequency with the lowest SWR at the moment, which is 139,350, and we divide it by the frequency that we want, which is 146 megahertz, right in the middle of the two meter band. Now, if you divide those two together, you get 0 0.954. So basically it means that we need to make it a little bit shorter. So we need to make it, what, 5% shorter, I suppose, is what that's telling me there. So what you do is you do 0 0.954 multiplied by the current length that you have. So the current length that we had for the outside PVC measurement was 468. So that means that I need to reduce it down to 446. So I've done 0 0.954 multiplied by 468 equals 446. So that's the top element. So then the bottom element, we do 0 0.954 multiplied by our measurement, which is 458, and we should get 436. So our two new measurements, top element 446, bottom element 436. And this is where it's really important when you're actually tuning antennas that you might get measurements such as these, and this is the reason why I've given you these measurements as a starting point that are slightly longer um, than they actually need to be. You might need to find out that you have to tune it. So because not everything's gonna be the same in all uh, instances. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shorten this antenna. I'm not gonna change the coil, I'm gonna leave that the same, but I'm going to shorten this antenna, top element 446, bottom element 436, and let's see how it tunes up. So I know that I've gotta reduce this top section by 22 millimeters, but then I've also got to reduce this by 22 millimeters. Now, rather than unwinding this whole coil, what we're gonna do is we're going to leave this the same length, and I'm just going to pull back 22 millimeters more of braid, and then I'm going to re-measure uh, the top half and then cut that back. And then that saves you having to undo all of that. Honestly, it's enough to blow the dog off the chain today, but we've done our little adjustment and you can see there now I'm at 146 megahertz and we've got a 1.174 SWR. So now we're good with just that little tweak. 
Now it's not only two meters that you can build this for, you can build it for other bands. I've built it for six meters and also for 10 meters. In fact, I had someone the other day who commented saying they built their version for 10 meters and it's been working fantastic. They've been working stations internationally on the 10 meter band just using the flower pot antenna. If you wanna see how to build the six or 10 meter versions, then I did videos or two videos of how to build that over here.